So you ready to talk about uh, how to become an art snob? Oh, yes. Yeah. I was born ready. You're born an art snob? Yes. Rafi's Rambles. Rafi's Rambles. Rafi's Rambles. <laughs> Hola, you amazing artists! Today I am going to talk to you about an article that I saw about how to become an art snob. The reason that I'm doing this video is because a lot of you guys always ask me like, Hey Rafi, how do I approach people when I'm at an art gallery gathering? And I'm not really an expert at that because I am really shy and I am kind of introverted. When I go to art receptions, I'm very strategic about who it is that I talk to. I talk to people that I know and I recognize. And if somebody comes to me and opens up a conversation with me, I am more than happy to talk to them. So I'm not as shy and introverted in that sense but for me to actually just approach people that's nerve-wracking i think a lot of people think that they have to do that when they go to events and the truth of the matter is you either go to an event and it's lame because nobody there is really talking to anybody or you go to an event and you just have fun and so so i read this article about being an art snob just to see if it would benefit us to be an art snob when we go to events. I feel a bit like a nervous gazelle on the open safari at art reception. Yeah, that's why. That's why you need to be an art snob. So let us go into the world of becoming art snobs. Yes. yes. Why do I have my pinky up? I don't know. It just happens. It's like a bodily <laughs> reflex. A bodily snob reflex? Yeah. <laughs> it's like when you say, what medium is this? Then the pinky just goes up. <laughs> So the first thing that I found in the article is you are an art snob if your opinion about contemporary art and artists is the most important one in the room. Whatever it is that you think, that is absolute truth and it is the most important fact in the room. So when you look at some art and you say like, this is no good, you know that that's the truth. So it's anybody- It's law. Yeah, it's, it's law. <laughs> Pretty much what you do is you ignore the opinions of anyone else and you discredit anybody else's opinion. Who cares what anybody else thinks? Yeah, because their opinion is not the law, clearly. Yeah, you're, I, okay, so yes, that could be a benefit if uh, you are completely egotistical and shallow and need everybody to respect your opinion despite whether or not it's true or not. I really can't stand behind that one, so I'm sorry. Yes, I know I want to teach you how to be an art snob, but what I would actually recommend is to just go in and understand that everyone's opinion about the art is an opinion. No matter how much formal education they have, no matter how much they're walking around acting like a snob, everybody's opinion is just that. It is just an opinion. You have these conversations of varying opinions about one piece of art, and that's what makes it interesting, is that everybody has a different perspective on what they see when they look at art. I wouldn't just walk around and pretend like your opinion is the only one that matters, although that could be a lot of fun. Well, your opinion is wrong, because mine's <laughs> the law. The second rule of being an art snob is you are only interested in socializing at art functions for the pure sake of political gain. What this means is that you go to art functions only if you are going to be standing next to someone famous or you are going to be having conversations with someone notable and that the press may be there to take pictures of you doing these things. Well, my fancy elbows aren't gonna rub themselves. <laughs> I think there's nothing wrong with that. If you want to go to events where like you're gonna be mingling with who's who's and all that stuff, that's awesome. But I think that it is extremely important to socialize with local artists local art events, people in the local art market. Snobbing it up is great, but also just getting connected to the community. Uh, I, think, I think that that's important. But I also don't think that you need to go to every single art event that's out there. But that's another side of it. it a lot of artists, that's, that's how they get out there. That's how they get their name out there is by socializing at all of these art events and making sure that they're seen at these art events because the more that they're seen, uh, the more that people are talking about them. The third thing, if you are an art slob, slob, slob. <laughs> if you're an art snob. I don't fraternize with art slob. I guess I would be an art slob. <laughs> If you are an art snob, you are stuck on exclusive names and labels. In other words, you only stick with trendy artists 
who are either seen as famous or notable. So, so in other words, you're the name dropper. Yeah, the you're the name dropper. Unfortunately, uh, I don't know that that just applies to art snobs, or maybe it's just people that try to be art snobs or think that that's a good thing. I've run into a lot of artists that that is their... Uh, their modus operandi. Modus operandi, where they will name drop big time. I like to be like, I don't know who any of those people are that you just said. Yeah, that's Sorry. always a good response when somebody's like, yeah, you know, like I worked with this artist and I work with this artist and be like, oh, yeah. Who are they again? They'll be like, yeah, you know, Jeff Koons. Be like, sweet, is he at the local farmer's market on Saturdays? Wait, <laughs> it's like whenever somebody's talking sports to me, uh, because I don't follow sports, so I like messing with them. Yeah, in football, man, when that guy dunked that hoop last time, that was amazing. <laughs> That's so good. I'm pretty much like, do you want to talk about Harry Carey? Because I know about him. Yeah. If you want to talk about the majestic creature that was Harry Carey, yeah. I'm game. It's a hard pot. pot. Hi. <laughs> Number four to be an art snob is that you only attend VIP art events. That is that is all you attend. By the way, VIP art events could be the most pretentious thing that you will ever go to. So if you go there, I suggest you play the art snob and have fun with it. What exactly makes an art event VIP? Um, an art event being VIP means that uh, it's got a lot of media coverage, it's got uh, celebrities going to it, so oh. like, um, you know, it's an exclusive event. For example, the thing that I did with the Museum of Contemporary Art, that was a VIP event. I that get was considered it. a VIP. Invitations were sent out. So basically, you can't just slap VIP on your invite. You actually have to have some street cred. Or maybe you can, like you do like a home studio visit and be like, this is a VIP. <laughs> Henceforth, all of our events should be VIP events. All of our events are VIP. We'll just start inviting people like Bill Murray. Oh, the question is, is Bill Murray good enough to be at our VIP event. He's good enough for my event, oh, just yeah. saying. Yeah, I love Bill Murray. By the way, there's nothing wrong with going to a VIP event, but I did go to a VIP event once and tried to get dressed up. It was black tie, and instead of wearing a t-shirt with my suit jacket, I actually dressed up in a tuxedo, and I was so uncomfortable for the entire thing. So uncomfortable. It's not me. I, I'm not into that pomp and circumstance. I looked back at photos of us and we both looked like a couple of stiff heads. Oh my god. <laughs> yeah. We looked good, but we looked <laughs> we looked uncomfortable. <laughs> what a couple of jerkwads. Yeah. You, you could dress however it is that you want for a black tie event or whatever it is. And you know, if they don't let you in, then you could be like, do you know who I am? Look at these elbows. Yeah, look at these elbows. These elbows only intermingle with other VIP people. Which brings us to number five, which is as an art snob, you judge people only by appearance. Obviously. <laughs> Every pair of shoes that I own has some form of paint on them. So these are my house shoes. As you can see, they look horrendous, right? Like, it doesn't matter how expensive the shoes are, they've got some paint on them. And it never fails that when I am at an event or meeting with people, um, it's usually the ladies. The ladies are the ones that will do this. They'll look at me, and then they look down at my shoes, and then there is this sudden look of disappointment. I'll be talking, and I'm watching all of this happen. Then there is this sudden look of like, ooh. And then they'll look back at me. <laughs> and I'm like, oh my god, did they just judge me on my shoes? Oh, they did. Is that a, is that a thing? Your shoes have been found wanting, sir. Oh my goodness. Do you know of ladies that do that? Oh, I have seen ladies do that. Oh. I think I've seen men and women do that. Oh, well, it's a good thing I'm married. <laughs> she doesn't care what my shoes look like. Um, I like how I look, and I think that it's comfortable being in your own skin and dressing the way that you want to dress. I think that that's important, despite what you think that anybody else is gonna say. What do you call your style? Hobo chic? Yeah, my style is hobo chic. Whenever I dress up, I am very hobo chic. And mine is raggedy prim. Yeah, raggedy prim and hobo chic. Which, by the way, guys, you guys wanna see hobo chic? <laughs> <laughs> I did this the other day and I was like, oh my god, I'm gonna be that wily old man with the crazy beard, like, woo! 
in the back of videos. You know, other <laughs> YouTubers are gonna be like, let's talk about something important. I'll be in the background like, woo! Number six of being a pretentious art snob is speaking only art speak. The art lingo that nobody understands what they are talking about. So you're like, I don't understand the artist's use of verdigris in the contouring of this painting. Yeah, listen, if you want to be an art snob, then, then take a look at how you can describe things in a way where you're not really saying something, but you are kind of saying something, but there is a much easier way of saying it. I had a friend back in the day who would write poetry, and he would only use big intellectual words, and I would read his poetry, and 99% of the time, I needed him to sit there and explain to me what each line of the poem actually meant. Yeah, that's something that I did as well, and that is totally an insecure power move. It made you it made you feel like, yeah, I'm smart and I'm I'm important. Yeah, and yeah. look, I'm somebody who has a pretty sizable vocabulary. I talk real good. I talk real good. <laughs> but I'm not afraid anymore to tell somebody like, I don't know what you're talking about. Yeah. Because it's not just the art world. People like to use big language in all areas when they're intellectual. Oh yeah, all of these tips don't just apply to the art world. This just uh, this is like the real world snobs. You could be this way, you could not be this way. Doesn't matter if you're in the art world or not. Uh, another tip that will tell you that you are an art snob is you are closed-minded. This one's the one where I have a really difficult time with because it's art. Art is the most open-minded, diverse, open to interpretation thing that exists out there. Any art, whether it's a song that you're listening to, whether it is a painting that you're looking at, a sculpture, it's very rare that something is as literal as it appears when 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 you're talking about art. When your opinion is the law, why would you want to be open-minded to anyone else's opinion? Yeah, I, <laughs> I see what you're saying there. That's one of the reasons that you always have to be careful when you meet somebody that, that you admire their work or something, is don't put them too high up on a pedestal. Yeah, I would say this is one of my biggest pet peeves, actually, especially with the whole what is art and what isn't art conversation. Yep. Let's try to be a little open-minded people. And I'm sure that I'm gonna have one of those people that likes to comment on the videos and is like, well, the art world, oh. You, don't comment on my video. There's only room for sculptural and figurative and oil. <laughs> Real art is oil only. Digital like, art is not art. Jewelry art is not art. Yeah, get, get those ideas out of your head because those were all opinions that you decided to take on and say, oh, these are facts. This is the, fa <laughs> these are the facts of the art world. Like, no, no, there are no facts. It's open to interpretation. Finally, the last one. You are an art snob if you eat, sleep, and breathe art. Yeah, I would say art's a definite major part of our existence. Yeah, so according to this author, if you do that, you are an art snob. So I will be an art snob when it comes to the fact that I do identify myself as an artist. It's taken me a long time to be able to identify myself as an artist. Of course, I identify myself as so many other things. I am a human being. I am a person with a beard. I mean, there's all kinds of things that I identify myself <laughs> with. Those are the two you came up with? Yeah, human being with a beard. Excellent, sir. As a closing thought, I'm going to say this. If you are going to an art event, no matter whether it's a VIP art event or whatever it is, just be yourself, have a good time. There is nobody that you need to behave like, no matter what you've read out on the internet, that you have to act this way or that way when you're intermingling with artists. No, you don't. Just be yourself. And that's it, you guys. Hopefully you guys found this entertaining and helpful. I really don't know if it was, but we had a lot of fun filming it. We are getting a whole bunch of questions, but we are still reading all the questions, even if we don't respond. So if you have a question for us, just leave them in the comment section below. And thank you so much for watching, you guys. You guys are absolutely freaking amazing. I totally adore you. And if you like this and you want to watch more like this, just click right over here to subscribe. And that's it. Say goodbye, Clee. Good day. <laughs> Good day. Adios.